Alaska. The mere mention of the word conjures up the image of beautiful coastlines, majestic peaks, and lots of snow. One also thinks back to the gold rush, when miners headed into the Klondike by the thousands. There's still a place to enjoy the scenery and get the gold rush flavor, the White Pass in Yukon. Our visit begins in the southeastern community of Skagway. Downtown Skagway is a national historic district and has changed little from the gold rush days. The buildings have been carefully restored and the town is full of old time charm. Although the land that would eventually become Skagway was staked out in 1887, the area really did not grow in population until gold was found north of here near Dawson, Yukon in 1896. Prospectors flooded the region, with most heading to nearby Dai, which is six miles from Skagway, where they climbed the established Chilkoot Trail. It was a brutal climb, but prospectors still came by the thousands. In 1898, a group of investors from London, England, started construction on the White Pass and Yukon route, the railroad that we will be riding today. The line eventually climbed to the summit of White Pass, which is now the border between the United States and Canada. Then it passed through a small part of British Columbia before reaching Whitehorse, Yukon. The White Pass carried freight and passengers until 1982, when a major shipper along the line closed, which in turn forced the railroad to cease operations. During the years the railroad was closed, Skagway started to become a stop for cruise ships touring Alaska's Inside Passage. In 1988, the railroad reopened between Skagway and White Pass to cater to this new passenger trade. Over the years, more of the railroad has been reopened to serve the ever-increasing passenger demand generated by the cruise ships. The White Pass is narrow gauge, with three feet between the rails, instead of the usual standard gauge, which has a width of four feet, eight and one half inches. Narrow gauge was cheaper to build and can snake around much tighter curves than standard gauge track, which as we will see is an advantage here. Since the White Pass has never connected with any other railroad, being narrow gauge has not been a problem. The locomotives are unique to the line being custom built for the White Pass. The 90 series shovel nose diesels were built between 1954 and 1966 by General Electric. The 101 series diesels were built between 1969 and 1971 by the Montreal Locomotive Works. Number 114 was built in 1982 by Bombardier. The White Pass also has two steam locomotives that are used on occasion. Number 69 was built in 1908 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works, and number 73 was built in 1947 by Baldwin. Number 73 was the last steam locomotive built for the White Pass. In the first part of the program, we'll be following the line to Fraser, British Columbia. Let's look at that route. We're in the state of Alaska, in the narrow southeastern part of the state. Skagway is a tiny port community adjacent to the Lynn Canal. The White Pass and Yukon Depot is downtown, and there are several loading platforms on the docks next to the cruise ships as well. As we move inland, we see the shop complex where the equipment is maintained. Once past the shops, the railroad begins climbing almost immediately. To keep the gradient down, the railroad follows the east fork of the Skagway River, crossing it at Denver. The line then loops back to the Skagway River Canyon.
White Pass in Yukon curves with the river and then crosses it at Glacier. The railroad climbs ever higher and clings to a narrow shelf alongside the aptly named Tunnel Mountain. Past the tunnel, the line snakes along the mountain high above Dead Horse Gulch. Crossing the gulch is the now abandoned Bridge 18A, last used in 1969. Just beyond the old bridge, the railroad crosses the gulch on a new bridge and then tunnels under the mountain. Just beyond, we cross the border into Canada and British Columbia here at White Pass. White Pass is not the highest point on the railroad, it's actually in the rugged area just past there. The line then descends Fraser Hill into Fraser, British Columbia. We'll see the railroad beyond here later in the program. We'll start our trip on the White Pass in Yukon at the Downtown Depot. We depart Skagway at sea level and stay on mostly level track as we pass through town, which as we see is a quite rare thing on this railroad. On the left, we see some of the coaches waiting their next train. Many are old timers, being built in the 1890s, while some have been constructed fairly recently, but made to blend in with the old time flavor of their older sisters. We're passing the White Pass maintenance shops where all of the equipment is serviced and overhauled. On the left is the Skagway River. We'll soon part company with the river and begin our climb to the summit of White Pass. In the 20 miles between Skagway and White Pass, the railroad climbs nearly 3,000 feet with grades that approach 4%.
At Rocky Point, we're seven miles from Skagway, but have already climbed to 637 feet above sea level. Looking out to the left, we can see all the way to Skagway and beyond it to the Lynn Canal. Far below us was the White Pass Trail, which later became a very rough toll road. One can see how the railroad greatly speeded up transportation from the port in Skagway to the gold fields. Across the valley, we see the U.S. Customs Building on the Klondike Highway. The sign below the Customs House was put there in the early days of the railroad. George Buchanan was a Detroit businessman who helped sponsor trips to Alaska for disadvantaged youth. The sign was put there by a group of kids from Cleveland, Ohio as their way of saying thanks. We're passing by the siding at Clifton. In the early days of the railroad, a track crew actually lived up here. Today, it's still a handy place for the track crew to pull into the siding to let our train go by. We're at milepost 10.2 at Black Cross Rock. It was here in 1898 that a construction accident sent this large boulder down the hill to land on two workers who are still buried under it to this day. In the distance, we see Bridal Veil Falls. We're starting to get into some snow. Our visit was in May, just after the tourist season had started. This area had an unusually late, heavy snowfall, so we're treated to rare winter-looking views of the White Pass route.
With the late season snowfall, the White Pass had to contend with snow slides. Here, we passed through a slide that had been causing problems by repeatedly covering the tracks. passing slippery rock where workers blasted out the railway line while hanging from guy wires. We're at an elevation of 2,275 feet and one of the most spectacular parts of the line at Tunnel Mountain where the valley is about 1,000 feet below the track. Here we see a train following on the lower level as the train ahead of it passes by on the upper one. Inspiration Point, another place where one can see all the way back to Skagway, nearly 16 railroad miles away. Below us is Dead Horse Gulch. In the winter of 1897, hundreds of pack animals died, killed by gold-crazed drivers who literally worked the animals to death over the rugged terrain. In some cases, the horses were known to jump off the cliff to escape their brutal masters. At Gulch, the train passes Old Bridge number 18A, which has long been one of the icons of the White Pass. It was abandoned in 1969 when freight trains became too heavy for it, with the railroad instead going over a new bridge just down the line.
train is nearing the summit at White Pass, which, while only 20 miles from Skagway, is 2,856 feet higher. White Pass is the border between Alaska in the United States and British Columbia in Canada. When the railroad was in year-round operation, there was a station and customs office here. White Pass is the destination of many trains from Skagway. The locomotives will run around the train on the siding, and then the train will return to Skagway. Our train, however, will continue on north to Fraser, British Columbia. Arriving in Fraser, where our train will pick up passengers from the waiting tour buses and return to Skagway. we see the old steam locomotive water tank that was enclosed in this building to prevent the water from freezing. Fraser is also where Canadian Customs inspects the train. Our diesels run around the train 
then will return us to Skagway. Our train from Fraser is once again nearing the station at White Pass, which was indeed a winter wonderland during our visit. return trip to Skagway is every bit as spectacular as the trip up the hill to White Pass. Okay, sure.
As we near Skagway, we encounter a black bear running down the tracks. The area along the railroad abounds in wildlife. Our train is passing steam locomotive number 73 at the shops and will soon be stopping in downtown Skagway. Now that we've seen this end of the line, let's go to the other side. We're in Carcross, Yukon as the train to Skagway leaves the siding and pulls into the depot. Carcross is currently the northern end of the operating part of the White Pass in Yukon. The railroad actually extends another 40 miles to Whitehorse, where the depot there is still in service, but only for buses. Between Whitehorse and Carcross, the railroad is out of service, the tracks slumbering away. Let's look at the route between Carcross and Fraser. Yukon Territory is in the northwest part of Canada. Carcross is at the very southern part of the territory where Naris Lake and Bennett Lake meet. The railroad follows beautiful Bennett Lake. The lake is quite wide near Carcross with the White Pass in Yukon hugging the shoreline. Just past the boundary with British Columbia, the canyon narrows, with the railroad and lake sharing a tiny gorge as far as Bennett. Bennett is the lunch stop for trains in this area. Beyond Bennett, trains begin climbing away from the lakeshore as they work their way up Fraser Hill. Near Log Cabin, the railroad makes a detour around the mountain. We then pass several other lakes before once again arriving at the old station and water tank at Fraser. Departing Carcross, we crossed this one-time swing bridge that allowed steamboats to transit from Bennett Lake to Naris Lake. It ended up not being used much, as the railway itself eliminated the need for steamboats on Bennett Lake. At one time, gold seekers by the thousands rafted down this lake on their way to the Yukon River and the gold fields near Dawson, Yukon. It's hard to imagine watching our little passenger trains scoot along here today that there used to be huge freight trains that regularly ran along these shores.
Pennington was once a place where track workers lived, one of several such places that were located along the railroad. Bennett, British Columbia, is the lunch stop for trains in both directions. The town got its start because it was at the northern end of the Chilkoot Trail, and people camped here by the thousands before continuing north on Lake Bennett. Most of the town is gone, but the church still remains as a reminder of the old times. Here we see kayaks being loaded on the flat car behind the locomotive for the ride back to Skagway. Many hikers also embark or detrain here. Although most passengers are on shore excursions from the cruise ships, many people actually use the White Pass in Yukon for real transportation. Parting Bennett, we climb up Bennett Hill, away from the lakes below.
We've arrived back at Fraser. Our train will continue on to Skagway, but we'll leave it here to see some steam. White Pass Steam Locomotive number 73 is northbound at Glacier headed for Bennett. This was a photographer's charter featuring the last steam locomotive built for the White Pass, 282 number 73. Due to the heavy schedule of regular passenger trains that we had to make way for, we didn't have many photo stops, but what we did were very nice.
few days later, number 73 was returning to Skagway empty from another private charter, and we were able to capture a few scenes between Fraser and Skagway. The White Pass in Yukon is a throwback to the time before highways and high-rises, letting guests visit the old times, if only for a day. May it long take passengers to the top of the world. <laughs> 